Hello and welcome along to another episode of this FM21 Builder Nation story from Bangor City with me, Daniel. It's part 171 and we are back today for what could be, again, the biggest episode of the series. We had it exactly a year ago as we faced Rafe Rovers in the semi-final of the Europa League. And this year, arguably the test is even tougher. It's West Ham United who we'll be facing. The home legs up first, but we'll be showing both today as well as the JD Welsh Cup final that sandwiches it. So if you're looking forward to the triple header and all the action being on the pitch, please do put a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below for daily FM21 content every weekday from this series. Fingers crossed tomorrow will be a Europa League final. It's a big ask, but if ever there's a chance, it's now. But let's go and have a look at the schedule quickly. Look at the three matches we've played. All pretty comprehensive wins. A 3-0 win at TNS. Gordon Waters and Briones with the goals. A 3-0 win at home to Barrytown United. Strom and a key and bulky brace late on off the bench. Before a 4-0 win last time out against Colwyn Bay. Two for Gordon, one for Jones and one for Harvey Lloyd. That leads us into this one with everyone fit. Of course the Welsh Cup final again against one of the top four sides. We're going to have to give it up. We're going to have to play the reserves in that game and hope they can get through because West Ham United is the sole focus here as we try to create history for Welsh football in Europe. We've already done our job. We had to deliver when the other sides have poor draws or poor results in Europe and we've now carried the Welsh coefficient. So let's see if we can go one further today and take this side to a European final. The other game, I just want to say this as a side note, the other semi-final is Nice v Ajax. So arguably our toughest test is this one, the semi-final against West Ham. Apart from that and Sevilla, we've had a pretty nice draw in truth. I don't think we can really argue. We now owe Ray Frovers a big one because they knocked us out of the Champions League and we were a bit rueful that we didn't reach the last 16. It's turned into a blessing in disguise. Let's close down the players they recommend. I saw the number 10 there on 325 grand a week. We had a look at him last time. He's phenomenal. He's the man we've got to stop. But this is the lineup I've gone for today. I was really tempted, and I might still, bring Harvey Lloyd in, in the holding role. They're so evenly rated. But because they've got a number 10 who's good in the air and very creative, I want someone who can win a header in that anchorman role, which is why we've gone for Odal. So between the sticks, we've got Roberto Simancas, Nenov and Fletcher are the fullbacks with Jennings and Whelan at centre-half. Odell, Reyes, Garcia and Bulkley make up a midfield diamond before Gordon and Cavara combine up front. What have we got between that front three? 108 goals this season, I make that. We could do with two more today. Take it into the 110s. Walters with just the 39 on the bench if we need them. And Tom Jones with 14. I've only gone one striker on the bench. I've left out Bulkley and Loza. But I hope at home to West Ham, I won't live to regret that decision. Into the first leg we go. I just want to be in it when we go to the London Stadium next week. Let's see if we can achieve that at least. So seven changes to our side from our last league game six days ago. And a lot of these boys have had a bit of a rest now as a result. Alex Neal's in charge of West Ham. The playable league, they've been doing a brilliant job. And to be fair, in a few of the Champions League group matches over the years, albeit often dead rubbers, we have competed at home against the very good sides. We've even beaten a couple. Manchester City we beat. I think we got a draw against one of the others once. But away from home is often where we fell down. So this is why it's so crucial that we stay in the tie tonight. As the ball's on the right-hand side with Nenov for a throw-in. Ten minutes gone. We've of course dropped a balance for this game. We're not going too aggressive. As Nenov releases Reyes on the right to Odal. He's got support with him. Plays left to Fletcher. He's marauding forward. Probably the one position we're much better than West Ham. And Fletcher delivers the cross. Kyo Bulkley delivers. Even his number 10 counterpart is better than him on paper today. But it hasn't stopped him being the star of the show. 1-0, Kyo Bulkley after 11 minutes. I'm starting to get excited, but I fear it may be a little bit too soon this time. As they're playing through midfield West Ham, Tamora on the left. Absolutely skins Nenov, who does well to get back at him. But then he's beaten again. It's into the back post. It's down and Samankas. He got something to it, but not enough. The lead lasts 30 seconds. We concede from the kickoff. And that excitement's gone straight away. I told you this would be a tough tie. We've got a corner at the other end, though. Who would have expected goals galore and chances galore? Punched at the back post by the keeper. Flicked on for the big number 10. I mean, he earns more than the whole squad, but Odell's nicked it off him. He's released Lloyd Goulding. And the star man for West Ham gives the ball away. Gives us the opportunity. And Lloyd Goulding, he might not be the rounded player that everyone else is on this pitch. But he is a super poacher. And at the moment, things are looking pretty good. But that away goal could yet be crucial. 
as West Ham pick it up in the middle again. Certainly by no means a dominant display. It's an even match. Anyone could win this. Lugo gets it on the right. Odell nicks it off him. Brilliant defending. But what on earth was that? You absolute idiot. What were you doing? He won the ball back on the edge of the box. He worked so hard to do it. He then passed it across his own six-yard box to the West Ham centre forward. Oh my word, the stupidity knows no bounds. Bulkley with a free kick into the box. Kavara gets there, as does Brett Jennings. It's 3-2. It's turning into a crazy game. What on earth can you say about this? Jennings excited. Bangor City back in the lead. But all these away goals are surely going to harm us. I've got to say, I was on the fence as to whether we keep Odell next year. I still haven't, via the scout reports, found a better replacement. But it doesn't look like he's going to be staying after that. As Nenov gets into the box, really good challenge from West Ham. Ball hits the corner flag and stays in. Lager can bring it away on the left to Mora. He's already created something in this game and he plays it into the number 10. Short ball back to Leon in midfield to Arena. He's got a man over on the right-hand side. He's got an overlap from the fullback as well. West Ham, they might be on the road hit. They are piling men forward. Nenov knocks it away to Bulkley. To Gomez-Garcia. Through ball to Goulden. His bread and butter, this is. But he's straight at the goalkeeper. Is that nerves? Is that the occasion? Because Lloyd Goulden doesn't miss those. Half time. What a game of football. 3-2 Bangor City. I would argue three, maybe four of the five goals have come directly from mistakes. It's not been a high quality game, but it's been phenomenal drama. It's a perfectly even match you can see on the stats. Same shots on target, pretty similar possession, but West Ham one goal behind. They'll be happy with the away goals and they'd love to nick a draw as they get the ball on the right-hand side again. Lugo delivers, Mora's up. Oh, he's missed a sitter. Hits the post on the near side. He's got to score that. Kavara is going to be replaced by Kane Waters. We're going to replace Garcia with... Do I go Strom or Jones? Let's go for it. Jones number 10, Bulkley in the diamond. And then at the back, Mubarak Whelan's on a yellow. So Briones will come on at centre half. Big decisions, big moments in this tie. We've got to at least keep this score and arguably try and do better because I don't trust us to not lose on the road. And it looks like the subs have helped the game peter out. A 3-2 victory is by no means a disaster, particularly given our away form in Europe this year, in knockout stages at the very least. But that's going to be a tough one to come back from. West Ham, you would say, just about in charge of the tie. Let's go and get the Welsh Cup final done with our reserve side against Colwyn Bay. And then we'll be back for the second leg of this one. Well, back for the Welsh Cup final. I'm sure it will be a much-changed team. I just want to mention one very quick thing domestically. You remember at the start of the season when I predicted Newtown as the outside bet for the last European spot? Survived on the final day. Absolutely atrocious year. So it'll be Cardiff Met Uni, Carmarthen... Lynette and Barla battling it out for the last European place. Today we'll decide whether Colwyn Bay are going to get third and the Europa League qualifiers or the fourth spot and the Europa Conference qualifiers. That just comes down to whether they win the Welsh Cup final or not. And they've got one hell of a chance because we're going to have to rotate. So we'll be back in a moment with our much changed 11. Well, some good news and possibly room for sentiment today. We'll wait and see. I'll pick Simancas. Let me put a Ghost in because I want to give him a cup game anyway. August will start between the sticks. It's our first choice back four because they've all got a light match load. They've been rested for all three of the week games in the league, so they can play all three of these. Harvey Lloyd will come in in the holding role. Might be a permanent change for Thursday based on Odell's performance. Strom, Davis and Tom Jones make up the rest of the diamond. Jones often delivers on the big stage, but he is down to two-star ability now. But he'll be here till the end, don't you worry. Loza and Kian Bulkley start in the final up front. Walters has a heavy match load, as does Briones. It means Scott McKenzie. This will definitely, if he comes on, be his final appearance. Gwen Morgan's there. Kavara's there. If we need to save the date, we've got Kaio Bulkley too. Gomez Garcia, not quite match fit, so he might come off as well. But let's go and get into the Welsh Cup final and see if Colwyn Bay can stop our backup team. And here we go. A few familiar names. A couple that they spent big money on over the last year or so, but they still need to do a little bit more. Tom Jones on the bench is a real shock because he's their best striker. They've still got Kean Burgess in at left back. They signed him from TNS last year, our former youth player. Ethan Bryan, the Nick from Cardiff Met Uni. And they are now very much the fourth best side in the country. So they're making progress, Colwyn Bay. We've got to stop them today, though. This is a big moment for us. A few of the players that we need to know, are you still going to be able to be our squad players next year? When TNS and Barry improve again, 
can we trust you to be our backup team? We're going to get the answer, particularly going forward, probably for the rest of today's game. Well, not good sign so far. 24 minutes gone, we've seen nothing. And now Colin Bay got the first attack of the match with Doncourt. We could be reliant as they hit the bar from the header. Looked like just a bit of a floated cross in. Got a glancing header to it and it beat everyone. In the end, the woodwork saved us as Burgess who's forward again. What I was going to say before is it already looks like we might need Bulkley and Kavara to come on and save us as Davis picks it up in the middle. Got an option wide in Kellum Fletcher. The wing backs, they're the first choice options here. They need to deliver for us. He puts it into Keon Bulkley, but not quite the clinical edge that we're used to. As it's a throw on the left with Fletcher again into the Geffen Davis. Often delivers in these big cup games. As Fletcher goes alone, that's an awful tackle. Into the box, chopped down from behind. Who takes it? Harvey Lloyd missed his only one. Strom's got a 50% rate. Bulkley scored his only one. Lowe's has not taken one. Right, Kai and Bulkley, be a hero. You are the young star. You're going to be the future of this football club. Everyone in the comments tells me that you're going to be world class. Deliver when we need a bit of a helping hand. He does just that. Down to the keeper's right. Never any doubt. Absolute thunderbolt of a penalty. The keeper went the right way. Didn't matter. Would have taken his arm off if he'd got there. But it's 1-0. There's five minutes to the break. It's not been a vintage performance. If we win 1-0, I don't care. As the corner's headed away as far as Brett Jennings. Not sure why he wasn't all the way in the box to start with. Back to Kellen Fletcher. Now Jennings again. Can we get that second? Just calm the nerves a little. I mean, we don't have to bring on the big guns. As Kean Bulkley's in again. Not really got the finishing touch from open play. He's had two chances that I would have banked on Walters to score. I would have probably banked on Kavara to score too. Certainly Lloyd Gordon. But not happened here. He has still scored the decisive goal though. So we're not complaining at the minute as Colwyn Bay break away. King's got the ball and he plays right to Semedo. We're getting men back in numbers, but is it quick enough? Good block to the cross. Who's that? Ludomir Srom. All the way over from the right side of the diamond. Phenomenal work rate as Ethan Bryan takes a goal kick. The game has livened up as we've got towards the end of the half. And Kellen Fletcher has very much come into it. He's delivered to Tom Jones. Always the man for the big occasion. I don't care. That after McKenzie, he's now the worst rated player in the senior team. And Gwyn Morgan. But when we get to the big games like this, he always delivers. We've really dominated the last 15 though. And we're deservedly in the lead. So let's see if we can back it up in the second half. As we're back with Burgess on the left hand side for Colwyn Bay. Again, they've had their moments in this half. But they've lost the ball high to Strom. Loza releases Kian Bulkley. He's got one man to beat. Does just that. Puts the ball in the corner. Kian Bulkley has arrived. Two goals in the Welsh Cup final. A phenomenal individual effort. Loza set it up. Now with three goals in the bag. With a big game in midweek. Let's go and rest some of those defenders. I'm going to take off. Dimitar Nenoff for Gwyn Morgan. Brett Jennings is looking a bit tired. So Scott McKenzie will get his swan song for the club. I'm going to bring Gomez Garcia on for Tom Jones. Davis is the number 10. Garcia to the right of the diamond. And let's just see out this game. It's been a comfortable performance after a dodgy start. Now we've just got to restrict them from attacking. As Morgan's got a throw on the right-hand side to Gomez Garcia, a fellow sub. His pass is poor though and Burgess can clear. To Scott McKenzie, the third sub involved. Kean Bulkley flicks down, lows are just wide. The target man role's starting to work for Bulkley there because he's that good and that dominant at this level. Maybe he could be a feature for us in that role moving forward. We're into three minutes of stoppage time. Morgan plays a 1-2 with Whelan at right back. We'll be more involved next year once Kai McDonald returns to Spurs. Unless he becomes available on a free or something. As Gomez Garcia nicks it in midfield. Charges down the right. Bulkley's got to try and get in there. It's his last chance to get the hat trick. Beats Doidge on the right hand side. Who's in the box? Who wants it? Gomez Garcia to a Strom. Just over the bar. 3-0 is the victory, but it was only really the warm-up event in this episode. Because the second leg against West Ham, with the tie so finely poised as well, is going to be the biggest moment of the series. We've won the Welsh Cup to make it four trophies, but can we get to our first European final? That's the only real marker of progress now. Let's skip ahead with Harvey Lloyd lifting the trophy and see if we can do it at the London Stadium. Well, it's an all-English Champions League final, as we've come to get used to Liverpool versus Manchester City. But can we stop an English side reaching the Europa League final too? It is Bangor City versus West Ham. And actually, the other tie has gone the same way as well. Nice came back late on and got a 3-2 victory at home. So both ties perfectly poised in very similar positions. 
and it's going to come down to away goals. If we can produce our away performances like at Shakhtar and at Besiktas, we'll have no problem. But this is a side that's going to manage the ball really well. So we'll see how it works out. We'll go and make our changes to the team. And we'll be back in a moment for the lineup for our biggest game in our history. Well, I think if I'm not mistaken, it's exactly the same 11 and even 18 as well. I've taken the plunge. I've given Odal the second leg as well. He's got a chance to earn his stripes. Now let's see if he can deliver. You know the lineup very well. We'll see if it can deliver on the night. If it does, we'll have a first European final after 18 years of trying. So again, seven changes from our last domestic game. And this time it's just the back four that keep their place. Everyone else has come back in. Kyo Bulkley skippers the side on a very big night for Bangor City. And to be fair, it's a very good team for West Ham. Very similar side. Kowalczyk's dropped out. He'd started the first leg. I think apart from that, though, they're as strong as they can be. You'd expect so. It's a massive moment for West Ham, too. Now, let's see if we can get the result. With 3-2 up on aggregate, we're going to drop to balanced. But we need, realistically, two away goals to make sure we've got a chance. As with five minutes gone on the clock, we've got a throw on the left-hand side, right down by the corner flag. Gomez Garcia turns his man. Leon heads away. As far as Kellen Fletcher, one of the star men in the first leg, gets it back from Reyes. Just over the bar. For everything Fletcher's been, he's not a prolific goal scorer. I know he scored one cracker an episode or two ago, but aside from that, he's not really done it. However, we've restricted West Ham, only one shot in 16 minutes, that they have got a corner here with Leston. Into the front post, Jennings heads away. Can we get there first? We can't. Mora picks it up on the left. Plays a 1-2. We've just got to intercept it. Bulkley gets a slide challenging, but it's still with West Ham. Leon forced backwards to Lager at centre-half. All the way back to the keeper. Phenomenal press. Well done, Kyra Bulkley. Well done, the front two. But they can still play out and start again. Here they are at right back West Ham. If they get the first goal, it's probably tie over and we'll have the same heartbreak again. But even Gomez Garcia, played in the Premier League with Leicester, tracking back, really working hard. Odal clears the ball downfield. Kavara can't get there. And Logo can bring it down at right-hand side. Capado wins it. He's taken on his man. Gomez Garcia again working his backside off, but he can't get there. It's into Leon, and he nods it down perfectly into the path of Leston, who volleys it wide to the far post. We've got away with murder there. It should have been 1 0 to West Ham, but we survive, and it's another Leston throw on the left. We've just got to stay in the game in spells like this and then try and counter. We've scored goals against great teams with rapid counter attacks. Can we do it here? It looks more likely the other way. What was Samankas doing there? It was a good strike from Leston. It was low. It was driven. It was at speed. But Simancas didn't move. If he stuck a leg out, he probably stopped it. Maybe unsighted. West Ham lead. As it stands, we're going out on away goals. Simancas plays out to the right. Leston intercepts. He's the man, I think, who's come in from the first leg. It's changed the tie. Berkeley, the 325 grand man, gets in behind to score. West Ham lead 2-0. It's slipping away again. We struggled against Rafe Rovers on this stage last year. And we've not learnt our lessons this time round. As West Ham play up again to Lugo. A third, it's probably over. Leon, right side of the box. Gets past his man. He's got three in the middle. It's a good block. But it's only to Garpadal. He's got it still. Just outside the area. To Arena. Good header away from Whelan. But it's only as far as Leon. We are camped in. We cannot get out of our own half. This is a scintillating West Ham performance. This is a side producing their best football. And we haven't even had the counter-attacks to produce anything in this game. Lager's got the ball on the left-hand side. West Ham's so comfortable. And Leon picks it up again. They're not really going anywhere. They're just keeping the ball, making us chase, making us shift from right to left. And we can't cope with it physically or technically. Lugo right side of the box. It's beaten Simancas again. What a day for him to have a poor night. And it's 3-0 West Ham. Even now, two goals only gets us extra time. I don't see a world in which it happens. It's been far too good from the Premier League Giants. And now Bulkley's got a free kick on the right. Give us a glimmer of hope. Knocked away. Back to him. Shot's blocked. Bulkley gets it again. Goes back to Nenov. Just give us one before the break. Give us something that makes them a little nervy. Fletcher chips in. Kavara's there. He's offside. The flag's going to go up. VAR will rule it out. There's no way he would have been that far clear unless there was an offside. It stays 3-0. It's going to be a big second half. I don't think we've got it in us yet. There we go then. I mean, West Ham's expected goals isn't even one. It's not like they've absolutely pummeled us. They're not clear-cut chances they've had. They've dominated the territory. They've scored from basically everywhere. 
and we're just not competing at the moment as Nenov plays the ball up to Gordon. We might have to go positive as Gordon just passes it away. It's not really his game to drop deep and play little intricate passes. As Leston gets it on the left, what a difference he's made in this tie. Arena up to Mora. Gets the ball wide. Fletcher intercepts. Up to Kavara. We need magic from the lad. Produces it for Golden. Gets in one-on-one. -on -one. Lloyd Golden gives us a chance. Kavara turns provider. Golden can't do the other stuff with his back to goal. But in that position, there's not many men in world football you'd rather have. 3-1. We're one away from extra time. Two away from causing the ultimate shock. We have just passed the hour mark. There's some really struggling performers out there. Bulkley can't get into the game because we can't get the ball high enough up the pitch. And West Ham again dominant in possession. It goes wide to Lager, into Leston. Oh, he's so good, that kid. Semankas tips it wide at the post. Where on earth has Leston come from? He didn't play the first leg, I don't think. He's so good. He's got over 20 caps for Brazil. He's a world-class talent. Let's put Bulkley into the diamond. Reyes is tired and on a yellow. We'll bring on Tom Jones, the man for the big occasion. Oh, do I go positive? Let's go for it. It's now or never, and we might as well go out big style than with a whimper. Kai McDonald will come on from Nenov as soon as this highlight's done, as Arena's got the ball in the centre of the pitch. Up to Mora. Oh, it's brilliant football. Samankas makes the save again, and he gets to the second one in time. Gomez Garcia's not been great. Geffen Davis on for him. Get the attacking players on. Get the creativity on. But it could be 4-1 by the time that happens. A short ass gets it on the right-hand side again. To Lugo on the overlap. West Ham have been brilliant. It would almost be a crime if they didn't get through after this. Into Mora. That's job done. 4-1 on the night. 6-4 on aggregate. And now we need two more goals. It's not going to happen. Two years in a row we have made it to the Europa League semi-final. Two years in a row. We flatter to deceive at the big occasion. Last year, Rafe Rovers was a great opportunity. This year, West Ham was a good one. But on the road against the very top sides in Europe, like Rafe and West Ham, we just haven't got the level of ability yet. I still think this is the right side now. We're perhaps two players away from what I'd love to have. Maybe three. But really, most of this side is just waiting for it to develop. I'm going to say it was one of those days. The lads have done brilliantly again. But Bangor City fall at the Europa League semi-final. I'm starting to think it might never happen. Four trophies in the cabinet. A second successive European semi-final. But we're not quite there yet. Some brilliant signings this year. Garcia has finally come to the party. Briones going to be a brilliant one for the future. Fletcher and Cavara absolutely sublime. 23 assists for Fletcher at left back. Odal may be a slight disappointment. We've got a big decision to make on him. And A. Tate, big season on loan for him at TNS, will try our very best to keep him there next year. Just the one draw in the league away at Colwyn Bay on Boxing Day. I'm sure that will get harder next year if they continue to invest at the top end of the division. But another Europa League semi-final. Memorable nights away at Besiktas, at Sevilla and at Shakhtar Donetsk. But we fell against the English side again. The ones in the playable leagues just too strong over two legs. The SPFL Trust Trophy final, a very close game but a convincing victory. Just ruthless in front of goal. Biggest win, 9-0 at Cardiff Met Uni. Moment to remember, 7-0 at Kefan Druids. We won 8-0 at Besiktas in the Europa League quarter-final. Come on! Bulkley, the star man, sells all the shirts, walks into this best 11. And to be fair, Geffen Davis is in there again because of Garcia's poor year. And at the back, they've gone for Briones above Jennings. Nothing stopping me playing the academy stars. Record set for discipline, the worst one for Jason Odell, ironically worse than Harvey Lloyd in the end. Record transfer for Garcia, which is just starting to come round now. But a bit like where we had the three or four years at the last 16 stage, we're probably going to have this now with the last four. It's just whether we can break it before the end of the save. Fingers crossed we can. If you want to find out and you did enjoy this one, please do chuck a thumbs up on the video. Subscribe down below and turn that notification bell on. We've got new episodes every weekday from this series. And it will be a transfer special on a Friday. I was hoping it might have been a Europa League final on Monday, but not to be. You can find links to playlists, the podcast and the Twitch channel up in the eye above. Please do come and check us out on all of those. But a massive thank you for watching, for checking out another season. And I'll see you tomorrow for a transfer bonanza. Which will probably be more about the other clubs than us. Uh -huh.